Meanwhile, Athena went to Sheria, where Alcinous, who has God-given wisdom, ruled. She went inside the bedroom of young Nausicaa, whispering in her dreams, planting the idea that she should go to the beach and wash her clothes. When Nausicaa awoke, she asked her parents' permission, which was granted, and a wagon and lunch were prepared. Nausicaa took up the whip and reins and cracked the whip. The mules were on their way, eager to go, and rattling the harness, bringing the clothes and girl and all her slaves. They reached the lovely river where the pools are always full. The water flows in streams and bubbles up from underneath to wash even the dirtiest of laundry. There they freed the mules and drove them to the river to graze on honeyed grass beside the stream. The girls brought out the laundry from the cart and brought it to the washing pools and trod it, competing with each other. When the dirt was gone, they spread the clothes along the shore, where salt sea washes pebbles to the beach. They bathed and rubbed themselves with olive oil. Then they sat on the river bank and ate, and waited for the sun to drive the clothes. But when they finished eating, they took off their headscarves to play ball. The white-armed princess led them in play. Nausicaa stood out above them all. But when the girl was thinking she should head home and yoke the mules, the pack, the laundry up again. Athena's eyes flashed bright. Odysseus must wake up, see the pretty girl, and have an escort to the town of the Phaeacians. The princess threw the ball towards a slave girl who missed the catch. It fell down in an eddy. The girls all started screaming very loudly. Odysseus woke up and thought things over. What is this country I have come to now? Are all the people wild and violent, or good, hospitable, and God-fearing? I heard the sound of female voices. Is it nymphs who frequent the craggy mountain tops and river streams and meadows lush with grass? Or could this noise I hear be human voices? I have to try and find out who they are. Odysseus jumped up from out of the bushes. Grasping a leafy branch, he broke it off to cover his manly parts. Need impelled Odysseus to come upon the girls with pretty hair, though he was nude. All caked with salt, he looked a dreadful sight. They ran along the shore quite terrified. Some here, some there, but Nausicaa stayed still. Athena made her legs stop trembling and gave her courage in her heart. She stood there. He wondered, should he touch her knees or keep some distance and use charming words to beg the pretty girl to show him to the town? and give him clothes.
At last he thought it best to keep some distance and use words to beg her. The girl might be alarmed at being touched. His words were calculated flattery. My lady, please. Are you divine or human? If you are some great goddess from the sky, you look like Zeus's daughter Artemis. You are as tall and beautiful as she. But if you live on earth and are human, your mother and your father must truly be lucky. Your brother's also lucky three times over. Their hearts must be delighted, seeing you, their flourishing new sprout, the dancer's leader. And that man will be luckiest by far, who takes you home with dowry as his bride. I have seen no one like you. Never, no one. My eyes are dazzled when I look at you. I am in awe of you, afraid to touch your knees. But I am desperate. I came from Ogaisha, and for twenty days storm winds and waves were driving me. Adrift until yesterday some god washed me up right here, perhaps to meet more suffering. I think my troubles will not end until all the gods have done their all. My lady, pity me. Battered and wrecked, I come to you. You first. And I know no one else in this whole country. Show me the town. Give me some rags to wear, if you brought any clothes when you came here. So may the gods grant all your heart's desires, a home and husband, someone like-minded. Then white-armed Nausicaa replied, Well, stranger, you seem a brave and clever man. You know that Zeus apportions happiness to people, to good and bad, each one as he decides. Your troubles come from him, and you must bear them. But since you have arrived here in our land, you will not lack for clothes or anything a person needs in times of desperation. I will show you the town. The people here are called Phaeacians and I am the daughter of the great king Alcinus, on whom depends the strength and power of our people. And then she called her slaves with braided hair. Wait, girls, why are you running from this man? Do you believe he is an enemy? No living person ever born would come to our Phaeacia with a hostile mind, since we are much beloved by the gods. Our island is remote, washed round by sea. We have no human contact, but this man is lost, poor thing. We must look after him. All foreigners and beggars come from Zeus, and any act of kindness is a blessing. So give the stranger food and drink and wash him down in the river, sheltered from the wind. Oh, 
Odysseus politely said, Now, girls, wait at a distance here so I can wash my grimy back and rub myself with oil. It has been quite a while since I have done it. Please let me wash in private. I am shy of being nude with you, her pretty girls with lovely hair. So they withdrew. Then he used the river water to scrub the brine off his back and shoulders, and wash the crusty sea salt from his hair. But when he was all clean and richly oiled, dressed in the clothes the young unmarried girl had given him, Athena made him look bigger and sturdier, and made his hair grow curling tendrils like a hyacinth. Athena poured attractiveness across his head and shoulders. Then he went off and sat beside the sea. His handsomeness was dazzling. The girl was shocked. She told her slaves with tidy hair, Now listen to me, girls. The gods who live on Mount Olympus must have wished this man to come in contact with my godlike people. Before he looked so poor and unrefined, now he is like a god that lives in heaven. I hope I get a man like this as husband, a man that lives here and would like to stay. But girls, now give the stranger food and drink. She gave her orders and the girls obeyed. They gave Odysseus some food and drink. He wolfed the food and drank. He was half-starved. It had been ages since he tasted food. Then white-armed Nausicaa had formed a plan. Folding the clothes, she packed them in the wagon and yoked the mules, and then she climbed inside. She gave Odysseus some clear instructions. Stranger, get ready. You must go to town, and I will have you meet the best of all our people. You seem intelligent. Do as I say. While we are passing through the fields and farmlands, you have to follow quickly with the girls behind the mules, and let me lead the way. Then we will reach the lofty city wall. The people in the town are proud. I worry that they may speak against me. Someone rude may say, Who is that big strong man with her? Where did she find that stranger? Will he be her husband? She has got him from a ship, a foreigner, since no one lives near here or else a god. The answer to her prayers, descendant from the sky to hold her tight. Better if she has found herself a man from elsewhere, since she scorns the people here, although she has so many noble suitors. So they will shame me. 
I myself would blame a girl who got too intimate with men before her marriage, and who went against her loving parents' rules. But listen, stranger. I will explain the quickest way to gain my father's help to make your way back home. Beside the road there is a grove of poplars. It has a fountain and a meadow round it. It is Athena's place, where father has his orchard and estate, as far from town as the human voice can carry. Sit down there, and wait until I reach my father's house in town. But when you think I have arrived, walk on and ask directions to the place of King Alcinos, my mighty father. It will be very easy finding it. A tiny child could guide you there. It is unlike the other houses in Phaeacia. Go through the courtyard, in the house and on straight to the Great Hall. You will find my mother sitting beside the hearth by firelight, and spinning her amazing purple wool. She leans against a pillar, slaves behind her. My father has a throne right next to hers. He sits and sips his wine, just like a god. But pass him by, embrace my mother's knees to supplicate. If you do this, you quickly will reach your home, however far it is in happiness. If she is good to you, and looks upon you kindly in her heart, you can be sure of getting to your house, back to your family and native land. 